May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. I greet you all this morning, wherever you may be, in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. It is my sincere hope and my prayer that you are in good health as we look to some easing of the restrictions of lockdown next month. Thank you for joining me on this, the sixth Sunday in the season of Eastertide. Although we cannot be together to worship in our community at St Mary's, we are together in the Holy Spirit, who tirelessly seeks to strengthen our relationships with each other and with God. And it is a great joy and a privilege for me to share with you some reflections on our scripture readings set for today. This is the third Sunday we reflect on the ways in which the ministry of the risen Jesus continues in the world to the present day. Two Sundays ago, we looked at Jesus' ongoing ministry as the Good Shepherd, who knows each of us by name, who provides for our every need, who loves us and who protects us, who leads us through difficult circumstances as our defender and our guide. Jesus is the Good Shepherd in whom we may trust and who does not abandon us. Last Sunday, we considered the ongoing ministry of Jesus in the world through discipleship, through following the examples of Jesus, through following the way of Christ as he calls us through the ages to be his disciples, reassuring us with his words, I am the way, the truth and the life, encouraging us to be his image bearers in the world around us, comforting us and consoling us with his words, set your troubled hearts at rest, Trust in God always. Trust also in me. Today we consider the ongoing ministry of Jesus in the world through his commandment of love and through his promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit as our helper. This promise Jesus made to his disciples at the Last Supper during his final conversation with them before his arrest. Knowing that he would be crucified in the next few days and pointing to his ascension, that we remember this coming Thursday, Ascension Day, Jesus warned his disciples that he would not be with them for very much longer, and he assured them that they would not be left alone in their journey through life. Jesus also looked forward to the day of Pentecost, when he told his disciples that they would receive another helper to accompany them, the Holy Spirit. We see this promise in our Gospel reading set for today, John chapter 14, Verses 15 to 21. Let me read it to you. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him, because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him, because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me, and because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. This translation from the Good News Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as helper. Other translations refer to the Holy Spirit as advocate, guide, consoler or paraclete. The earliest reference we have to the, the Holy Spirit in our scriptures is in the opening two verses of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the universe, the earth was formless and desolate. The raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness, and the Spirit of God was moving over the water. In the beginning, the three persons of God, God the Creator of the universe, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, we united together as one God in the Holy Blessed Trinity that we affirm each time we say the Nicene Creed. During the time of the Old Testament, 
The gift of the Holy Spirit was given to a few chosen individuals, to prophets and to rulers among others. The Holy Spirit was given to Moses and to leaders of the Israelites, for instance. We see this recorded in the book of Numbers, chapter 11, when Moses assembled 70 of the leaders and placed them round the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. He took some of the spirit he had given to Moses and gave it to the 70 leaders. Later on in the Old Testament, we see that the Holy Spirit was given to King David when he was anointed as ruler over Israel. This is related in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, when the prophet Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David and was with him from that day onwards. The gift of the Holy Spirit it was given to a select few people in Old Testament times, was given to the early disciples on the day of Pentecost, and it is given to each of us as followers of Christ. The promise Jesus made to his disciples, he makes to each of us. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles this morning shows Paul speaking to the people of Athens where he makes the same assurance to them and to us that, indeed, God is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move, in him we exist. The Holy Spirit may be seen as a bridge and a bridge builder, a bond of love that unites God the Father and God the Son in the Blessed Trinity and the bond of love that unites us with each other and with God, actively building and strengthening our relationships, connecting and uniting us with each other and with God. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at our baptism, when we are baptised in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, as Jesus instructs his disciples to do in the closing verses of Matthew's Gospel. The Holy Spirit also serves as a bridge for us from our baptism, through our present situations, to the promise of salvation and eternal life. The gift of the Holy Spirit inspires us, transforms us, liberates us, renews our lives, affirms our dignity, and reminds us that we are cherished in the eyes of the Lord, created in God's image. The Holy Spirit empowers us and strengthens us in times of weakness. And at this time, when we are separated from one another and we cannot worship together, let us reflect on the gifts we receive from the Holy Spirit and to reflect on the work that the Holy Spirit has performed and continues to perform in our lives as the ongoing ministry of Jesus and through his commandment of love. Let us remember especially the gifts that the Holy Spirit freely gives us, referred to, the prophet, referred to by the prophet Isaiah, in chapter 11, verse 2, gifts of the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And let us hold on to the words of Paul from his letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, where he writes of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Through the loving help and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, may we strive to live by the Spirit and to bear the fruit of the Spirit in our every being, so that the life and ministry of Jesus may continue to be revealed in the world. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. 
Hallelujah.